How's it going, Northwest Green Boys? You are looking at a above 500 Seattle Mariners team sitting at 64 and 62 late in the month of August on a seven game winning streak. Looking to extend that. Uh, we have a bunch of contract extensions to do, so we're going to go ahead and go through that. I've offered a few, but there are just so many still to go. And we're just going to go with the high overall players at the beginning of this episode. Hopping right into it. Jesse Winker's 28 years old. We'll offer him... Uh, we'll offer him a four-year contract. Can we front load it? I don't really... We're just going to keep it normal. If we front load it, that could make things a little bit complicated. He's going to be the most expensive contract that we're looking at. He wants $12.6 million a year. We're going to try to offer him almost nothing. At least in comparison to that. Just going to very slowly bump it up. And there we go. So we got him under what he wanted and uh, that's what we're gonna do for all these guys diego castillo the 28 year old reliever b potential still going up at uh, 83 overall so i'm excited about that we will offer him 28 we'll offer him four years as well he's looking to be a little bit cheaper that way that way we can offer a little bit less right now we don't have a crazy amount that we can offer uh players at the moment but uh See what we can do. He wants 5.1 million a year. How about 4.4? 4.5 million a year. 4.6 million a year. There we go. So again, we just kind of, we're going to lowball our best players to try and save as much money. Uh, we got Adam Frazier, the 30-year-old second baseman. He's been playing really well for us this season. I don't know if I can offer him a crazy amount of time. Three years is what I would love to do. But the more we offer him, the cheaper he's going to be. So we'll go three years. Uh, and honestly, we might look to trade him away. This could be expensive. Um, if he doesn't go at uh, below 6.5, then we're going to have to come back to this one. Um, yeah, so Adam Frazier, I mean, he's just, uh, he's 30 years old. He is going up this year overall wise. His power is getting better. He's a great defensive second baseman, I would say, or at least a good defensive second baseman. But uh, if you just look at our max offer and our player payroll, it's kind of getting up there. Let's go down towards the bottom and uh, re-sign Julio Rodriguez, our uh, a potential 21-year-old center fielder. This guy is uh, hes going to be really good in a few years. Can we offer him three years? If he takes three years, that would be fantastic for us. We can even afford to offer him a little bit less but uh 76k a year 80k a year oh my gosh that's a steal so we have some of the future sorted out a little bit and now let's go to the future of this season and continue to try to win this is a bad washington team 48 and 79 if we don't win both of these games i'll be so upset we had an eight game winning streak going logan gilbert gets to 500 on the season season but nick margavich is loses just his fourth loss of the year five six and now we go to a honestly a pretty solid cleveland we host them so that's good in the four game series it's gonna be up to jesse winker to save this one from going to extra innings one for three on the day for jesse two hour no outs sorry three outs available to us so we're not do or die on this at bat we'll try to uh I don't know, work, walk, maybe get on base, but just look for a good pitch to swing on. You guys remember we had some really good batting last episode, multiple home runs, including some nice walk-offs, and we almost had it there. Oh, we just popped it up. Jesse Winker, not great against the lefty, so who knows if he had the power to get it all the way to, over the wall, but uh, that's a tough pitch to miss. It does, however, bring up Mitch Hanniger in the four spot. He's been great all season long. Oh. If we push that oppo, it's a miracle. I think this one's going to be out as well. I saw a fastball. I was a little bit late swinging on it, and we just didn't make great contact. So that's quickly two outs. That's just disappointing. Adam Frazier now. Are we just going to let them off the hook in the bottom of the ninth? We are because I'm going to swing in another terrible first pitch. All right. Goon, you just got to calm down. Wait for your pitch. Watch him come in a little bit. We don't have to be uh, that stupid with our at-bats. Drew Steckenrider still in relieving as we are in extra innings with a runner. Uh, batted in here. Unless Winker can absolutely gun this one down to the plate. And we didn't even cut it off. Tried to cut it off. It's a RBI double, essentially. So Oster Mercado swings it our first pitch and puts it on the ground to left field. And now we are on the back foot. 
The Guardians, uh, I don't know, not a terrible team this year. They're also just above 500, but this is one that I kind of expected to win. We had the right positioning as Frazier will be under this. Perfect throw. Can we get him at second? Frazier, not the right arm, and I didn't quite get the wind up. So it's a sack fly to move the runner to third. That's just one out. Second rider is getting tired, but I'm going to save uh, Paul Sewell because I don't think that we will uh, utilize him well enough. Never mind. Uh, I don't know. Maybe that's a mistake. Mitch Hanniger, I don't know what the heck he's doing. This is going to be a triple unless he makes a really good throw. He is turning three. More. Can't get it there in time. Oh, my goodness. This is, We're collapsing right now. So from tied with no outs in the bottom of the ninth to now down two runs with only one out in the top of the 10th. This is quickly falling apart. They're just poking these balls into every findable gap. Just perfect batting. Really a shame. Also a really quick team because uh, the past two runners have had 80 plus speed. So that certainly doesn't help as we almost get the strikeout. <laughs> Let's try another fastball. Low, inside, and we get him to foul it off. I'd rather not have to uh, score three runs, but man, I just... The way that that last at-bat went, I don't know. I'm not confident that we're going to be able to come back from down two. Luke Mayle? Mailey? I don't know. Man, baseball names are the hardest for me. He's just battling away in this one-two count. Can we get him on the curveball in the dirt? No. 2-2. Two, two. Some of this probably could be relieved if we just brought in a new pitcher with full stamina, but uh, you got to expect this guy to miss one of these. Outside fastball. I don't mind loading the count here. And he fouls it off. This is currently a 11 pitch at bat with pitch number 12 on the way, and he pops it up. All that work just for a pop-up in the infield for Rizzo. Uh... I don't know. That was frustrating. Well, Miles Straw, another quick runner. Should he get this ball in play as we just completely whiffed the worst curveball that we've had. Thankfully, it didn't leave it over the zone, but we almost hit him. He swings at that second pitch fastball for strike one. And we left one over the middle of the plate, and we are lucky that that lands foul. Energy really getting low for second rider. Probably should bring him out. But that should be a grounder to end the inning. Eugenio Suarez fields it, gets the throw to Rizzo. We got some work to do here. We will see Anthony Rizzo, Eugenio Suarez, and Dom T. Williams, I think, as Adam Frazier is on second. A home run here would alleviate a lot of problems. And I'm swinging on another first pitch fastball. We got out in front of it, but at least we made an okay contact that time. Chris is batting 356 with runners in scoring position this season. It's two for four on the day in the 0-1 count. We're going to watch the high fastball for ball one. Would love to uh, get a little bit of stamina out of James Karinczak, but you never know what he is going to give us. But a uh, couple of high fastballs gets us ahead in the count. Really would love to open up this series with a win. Fouling off the fastball inside. Two and two. I feel like Rizzo could get really on one of these. I don't feel confident, though. I just don't think we're batting well. And uh, as I say that, popping it up. Is it going to get out on the warning track? <laughs> Into the stands. That thing was just floating in the air. We barely made contact. 337 feet out to where the wall is at 326. 20th home run of the season for Anthony Rizzo, and he ties it up. In the first at bat of the bottom of the 10th. There's a four mile an hour headwind coming out that way and still he got it over. That's really impressive for that hit. Dom T. Williams coming up to bat. He's batting 556 in the, the majors, uh, but I don't think he has a whole lot of at bats. Not the best batter here either. Swinging and missing at the low fastball. 11 plate vision is kind of going to be rough for us to hit with. Oh. He hung the curveball over the middle of the zone, but we just ground it to second base, so there's out number one. This feels a lot like uh, the bottom of the ninth, where it was tied up with uh, no outs. Can we do a little bit better this time? That was, I don't know what I'm doing there. Kind of thought it was a curveball. <laughs> Maya behind the high fastball. Quickly 0-1 for Suarez. 
Eugenio has the power to drive, but he has to get on it. And that one loops over the shortstop for a base hit. Okay, winning run on base. That's important for us. And we are going to pinch run Oswaldo Cabrera for him. Oswaldo can play the third base spot, but he's got 77 speed as opposed to uh, Suarez's 43, which could be enough. Harry Ford, three for four on the day. The catcher going to watch the first pitch for a ball. Anything into the outfield might be enough. A double for sure. That one, okay, moves the runner to scoring position. Harry Ford, four for five on the day. So a couple of shots just over the infielders. Puts two on. One out, though, has me worried. We're definitely at risk for a double play. Dylan Moore up 0 for 4. Last at bat was a ground out. But this one, a base hit might do it. And Oswaldo Cabrera uh, in scoring position. He's pretty quick. He could get there. Harry Ford with the 80 speed could also cause some problems if uh, they go for the double play ball. But, I mean, they might just walk the bases loaded here. Logan Allen in, five pitches in. He's given up at least one hit. I don't know if they made the pitching change after the Oswaldo Cabrera, but uh, he got in a 3-0. We're going to let him pitch the fastball for strike one, and we're just going to kind of wait and see what he gives us. I would love a walk here. Uh, It's going to deal us another strike. I just know that Dylan Moore doesn't have a super strong bat, so I would rather have him get on base with a walk than a hit. And there it is. Pitch low in the dirt, loads the bases with one out. That'll bring up J.P. Crawford with a chance to get the walk off. He's 0 for 2 on the day. Logan Allen, a walk here, does win it. J.P. Crawford swinging on it, and that'll do it. Tagging up the diving catch. That was actually an incredible catch, as uh, I did not mean to have uh, <laughs> Harry Ford tag up from second. But the sack fly into center field. It's enough to get the win. Oh my gosh, in extra innings. That was a way harder fought battle than it should have been, but we get it done. And uh, we can just continue to add to the win totals in this month of August. We definitely have some hot bats and uh, JP Crawford for winning that. We'll take a look at maybe offering him a contract extension. Man, we got to backload some of these uh, big ones because this is getting crazy. How old is JP Crawford? 27? I don't mind a five-year deal. Uh, four years could get him a little bit cheaper, though. And that's kind of what we're about right now. He wants 5.6. What if we offer him 5.2? I don't think he'll take, uh, like, a super low amount. 5.3 doesn't go for. How about 5.4? Okay, so we get him a little bit cheaper. But I don't know. I might need to be a little less cavalier with the money that we're giving to some of these players. Um, I don't know. It's going to be tough. Hopefully, we get a little bit more money in the future to give to him, though. Tuki Toussaint pitching in game two loses at 0-4. And we have a chance now to try and stay alive. Jesse Winker up to bat. Bottom of the ninth with zero outs. Down one run. Oh, man. Just a uh, tough series here against the Guardians. First pitch outside. It's Aaron Sival. I don't... Man. <laughs> I don't, I, baseball names I'm so just not confident with. It's just so hard to know. There's so many guys playing, you know, that it's just hard to know every name. That should have been gone. He hung the curveball in the middle of the zone. We were early. I didn't think it was going to break that much, so we just foul it off. And we get out in front of the cutter as well. That thing was launched 103 mile an hour exit velocity. Now we're in a 1-2. And we just got to swing at the low cutter. I thought that might have had a chance to get in. Oh, that hurts. They're going for the complete game shutouts as we've hit the 100 pitch mark for the starter. And Hanager pushes it down the line foul. He is leaving us pitches left and right to swing at, but we're not making good enough contact. And that's a pop-up. Oh, my goodness. Are we going to lose this game with all the meatballs that he's thrown us? It is up to a low power Adam Frazier to stay alive here. Takes strike one there. Second pitch on the way. I thought I checked up. They're going to call me? No. Oh, thank goodness. We were definitely around on that one. We get the lucky ball call, though. 1-1 one, one pitch. And Frazier pushes it down the right field line. And that one is off the wall. I'm running for second. Oh, thank goodness. The pitch was off the plate. 
And we now have a runner in scoring position. That was so freaking close to a home run. Anthony Rizzo comes up against a right-hander. Maybe a chance to walk us off here. 0 for 2 on the day. Watches the first pitch as they do make a, a pitching change. Karen Chack up. And that one really just belted on into center field and it's off the wall. It's gonna be an RBI single or double. Rizzo got there. <laughs> I don't know why I keep pushing Rizzo. The problem is his hits keep going off the wall so it makes it more difficult to get there. We couldn't think about pinch running him here, but uh, I think Jared Kelnick, if he's gonna drive something, it'll be deep enough to get him home anyways. First pitch inside for ball one. I can't believe those back-to-back -back batters though with it hits off the wall can't quite get that home run as the little bit of a wild pitch there's no chance unless that's a crazy pass ball that dies to the wall there's no chance we're sending Rizzo to third at the very least we have guaranteed ourselves one extra inning of batting if we have to go to the 10th Kelnick though in the 2-0 pitch mm, dipped on the fastball he blew that one past me 83 power by the way for Kelnick here against the righty and that's not going to be enough. Oh, that's a bummer. Well, we stay alive. Not enough to win it. Rizzo was like so close. A couple of feet from w walking that one off with the deep uh, home run to center field. But here we are. Tied 1-1. We at least ruined their shutouts and we get to these extra innings. It's the 91 speed Zimmer on second base. We're gonna hold him. We'll, we'll allow them to run to first if they want. <laughs> we take the fast runner out of scoring position. We give up, or we allow them to get to first on the fielder's choice. Really good fielding from Swanson as Miles Straw, who's also quick, comes up to bat and we're gonna try to pitch around him a little bit. Again, we have Paul Seawald warming up in the bullpen, but hopefully we don't need him, and hopefully we don't wait too long like it felt like we did in the last game. This one popped up. Frazier should be able to get under it. So that's out number two. We'll just uh, hope that we can get him in another spot. Thank goodness that we got rid of that runner at the third because that would have been a uh, sack fly RBI. Ahmed Rosario, obviously a threat for the home run ball. We'll see what we can hold him to here. I'm not worried about a steal, which is good. So we can just pitch and that one might be gone. Thankfully, curving foul. I really lost control of that one. So the one, one pitch, we're gonna go back to that slider that we just threw so poorly. It's not great that time either. Swanson, I'm, I'm struggling to pitch with. Catcher wants us to throw another uh, slider, but we're not gonna do it. Instead, the high fastball blows by Rosario. And this is the final strike for the Guardians in this inning. And he swings and misses. So now a chance for us to walk it off with a runner on second in extra innings. We have pinch run Dom T. Williams for Jared Kelnick. It gets us about an extra 20 speed on that extra bases or extra innings runner. As Eugenio Suarez, who's 0 for 3, comes up to bat. Uh, again, a couple of sacrifice flies. Could be enough for us to win this game. Even uh, a grounder. To the center of the right of the infield could be enough. 0-1 pitch. Swinging on the curveball that was a little bit outside. Very quickly 0-2. And this is going to be a tough at-bat to stay alive with for Eugenio Suarez. He can pitch around us. And he's going to. Knuckle curve outside ball one. If we could manage to stay alive and fight back in this at-bat for a walker hit, I would be very stunned. And we just missed the fastball. Blew it past us. Ballsy pitch, but it works. Man, just a uh, really smart decision to put up a righty here against this part of the order. As Harry Ford is one for three. Why am I swinging at that pitch? Are we going to go to the 11th inning? I feel almost like I'm throwing here, but uh, just struggling. And that one's gone. Harry Ford, the perfect, perfect homer. 38 power, and he still launches it out for the two-run walk-off home run. Oh my gosh, I am so excited for this kid in a couple years when the batting just gets better. He's 19 years old, his second home run. That thing was absolutely obliterated. That's a good way to walk it off. That's another extra innings win here against the Guardians. Uh, Harry Ford could not be a better man to do it.
that feels so good as we can just continue to advance through this series we've already tied it up no matter what and we have a chance now to get the win again in extra innings with mitch hanniger at the plate bottom of the 10th runner on second i think it's jp crawford they give us an 83 percent win expectancy what can we do first pitch coming i'm swinging on that and it's gone mitch hanniger the first pitch we're just obliterating home runs to walk the guardians off in overtime home run 21 for mitch hanniger 420 feet as we just blazed them oh that's the best kind of critical situation you come in you press literally one button and you get the win that is phenomenal that's gonna be uh, a really short little chapter uh, if you like hover over the the scroll bar for the video as <laughs> we will go and finish out this month of august we are 68 and 64 playing against the 68 and 64 detroit on the road and paul seawald has a chance to get the save here kind of a foggy day evening here in detroit uh if I'm saying that weird, that's because there's a Detroit in Oregon that is pronounced differently. So I apologize for that. Detroit, is that how you would say it? Uh, Spencer Torkelson watches the first pitch for a strike as we are just immediately getting this one underway. If there's anybody that I'm confident that will get us the win, it is Paul Seawald. No outs, bottom of the ninth. I don't know how that's not a strike. We'll go to the slider, hoping to get him here. And he swings and misses, 1-2. Up a little bit of low fastball. That one's popped down the line. Foul. Still alive. Outside fastball is an option. And he's going to push it into the right field. But it's not enough. Mitch Hanniger tracking it down near the wall. But it's out number one as he flies out. A kill Badu in for the second at bat of this inning. Fouls off the first pitch fastball. Let's go with a little outside slider. I don't feel confident about the placement of this one, but we get it low and we get him swinging. Oh, and two. We're going to deal him potentially a fastball strike. Oh, other games that's called. Blue doesn't give us any favors on that one. And we miss the zone with the slider. Good eye from Badu there. Pitch 10 of the inning for Seawall. The high fastball swung on and missed for out number two. So it'll be Jonathan Scope up, the last ditch effort for the Tigers. Watches uh, inside, kind of close to the middle fastball there for strike one. Can we just get him down with uh, fastballs? No, that's a base hit. Winker is going to be fighting to prevent that from becoming a double, but uh, 51 speed scopes there, stand up, no problem. Well, runner in scoring position, two outs. Tucker Barnhart, what can we do against him? This is, uh, again, a good Detroit team. They're certainly playing better than years past. Above 500, fighting for a postseason spot just like us. So this game is very important as we are almost in the month of September, the last two days of August. In the 2-1 count, we're going to give him the high fastball. As long as it doesn't hit the ground, this game will be over. And he's going to pop it up to Winker. Oh, goodness. That was awfully close. But there's out number three. Seven to six. Paul Seawald gets the save, even though he gives up a hit. And it'll be enough for us to get to win number 69. Nice. That is save number 38 for Paul Seawald as we will play one final game in the month of August at 69 and 64. Ooh, it's a chance to get the win. 4-3, top of the seventh. Uh, player locked as Mitch Hanniger. Can we hit a triple? I mean, we got bases loaded. Uh, we just want to get a hit here no matter what. Ford, Crawford, and Winker on base here in Comerica. As one out in the top of the seventh, we're up a run. But with the bases loaded, any sort of hit will drive in. And probably two. Uh, triple shy of the cycle. No chance we're going for a triple. I don't think Mitch Hanniger is quick enough unless things are really wonky, but a base is clearing triple or double would be nice. <laughs> Young the slider up, but we were late getting on it. Jose Cisnero quickly has us in this 0-2 count. We do not want to go down swinging. Certainly don't want to go down looking, but uh, man, that's a terrible pitch. Oh my God. What am I doing on that one? Do we still get the win? Claire locked his Hanniger. I don't know if we'll have another at bat. We did score a run there, it looks like. Now the bottom of the seventh with two outs. 
Let's uh, take a step back. I want to make sure that we get under this one. We'll play as defensive moments since it's our final game of the episode and it's gone. A one-run shot. Nothing that we can do to stop that one. It's back to a one-run game. Well, 5-5, five, five, top of the ninth, two outs. It's up to Hanniger to try to prevent this from being extra innings. Oh, gave up their lead. And we got under it. We almost launched it for a home run. Especially in Comerica, that's not a deep wall, but we just got under it. So it's not up to me. It's out of our hands whether we win this since we don't get a pitch. It is the bottom of the order for them. We could get this extra innings there. We can play as Ryan Greet. Uh, no, we're, in, we're playing defense. I don't know what I'm talking about here. Jose De Jesus pitching, runner on first with one out. Bottom of the ninth. Pitch on the way. It's going to be a pop-up. That'll push the runner back to first and get it to two outs. One away from those extra innings. And we are pinch run in the 10th. What are we doing here? Uh, batting with Adam Frazier. I guess uh, because he's gone, we will just get the chance to win it in these extra innings. 5-5, five, five, no outs. Oh, can we survive? It's the 79 speed Dom T. Williams on second base as we're going to watch uh, the first strike come in there. Adam Frazier, one for three on the day. 1-1 one, one count. Mm, we hit the slider. It's going to be deep. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tag up here. I don't think he has an accurate throw to the plate, and we are able to advance Dom T. Williams to third, so another one of those, and we can at least take the lead. And uh, Well, it's Anthony Rizzo up here against Gregory Soto. Rizzo's done it multiple times. Can he do it again? First pitch swing. That's going to be enough for at least uh, an RBI single. That was uh, really lucky. He doesn't get the diving catch there, but at least prevents the ball from sneaking past and holds Rizzo to first base. But we take the lead in extra innings once again. Jared Kelnick now up to bat. No contact against the lefty. I, don't, I think he has decent power, though. Uh... I mean, we need a really good shot to do anything here. Definitely a risk of the double play ball. But now that we have the lead, I feel confident with that. And, well, we're quickly 2-0 in the count. We'll see if they give us a good pitch to swing on. Certainly not afraid, and we just hit the pitcher. Is he still going to get the double play? No, Kelnick's able to get there. Soto took a shot off of the ankle. That's, man, if that bounced another foot away from him, I think we are safe with runners at first and second, one out. Instead, he's going to walk it off, continue to pitch, and now it's two outs with Kelnick at first. Eugenio Suarez up to bat. That's a shame that we didn't get him through the five hole for uh, just a simple base hit there. So close. I, I can't bat well with Eugenio Suarez, I feel like. Not sure what it is. This is definitely uh, a guy that he should be able to hit on as oh, we get a lucky ball call there on the low sinker. 2-1. Contact in the 40s for Suarez, but good power. If we could just get a hold of one, we'll be good, and it's a 3-1 count. What can we do to try and survive here? I just want to get more runs. He left this one, grounded to the third baseman, and that'll be it for the, tenth, or the top of the 10th. We're going to bring in Paul Seawald here. See if he can get another save. Robbie Grossman up to bat with an 80-speed Reyes on second. See what Seawald can do here. First pitch fastball is good for a strike. We'll hope for a couple more strikes as he swings it the way outside slider. Quickly strike two. And maybe we can get him on the three-pitch strikeout. No, it's a grounder. Frazier's not going to be able to get that home. So, uh... Well, it's tied up, and we'll have to go to 11 if we survive here. I did not mean to let that fastball hang in anywhere near the zone, but uh, just bad placement. He's able to get on it for the easy single, which is a bit of a bummer. So all of our work to get our run home is gone very quickly. Still no outs. Oh, gosh, hung this lighter middle, middle. Javi Baez doesn't swing. Uh, we should be terrified of him, but he goes down looking. Well, <laughs> that's a strikeout I didn't expect to have happen that way. So Seawald gets the first out. Torkelson up to bat in the four spot. Double play potential on the field. And man, a quickly 0-2 once again. We're going to deal him another slider just thankfully a little bit further outside. Or gosh, way over the top. Thank you, Harry Ford, for being able to reel that one in as that's going to be a grounder through the gap for a base hit. 
moving uh, runner into scoring position. Double play potential still there, but uh, I just, I don't know. Doesn't feel like we have it right now. Jonathan Scope up. He's going to foul that one off. Another quick 0-2 count, but we haven't done a whole lot with those so far in this inning. And he does swing and miss at the slider. So damage mitigated so far. Two outs. Two strikeouts as well. Just uh, a couple of hits added on there. It certainly hurts as Willie Castro fouls off pitch one. Robbie Grossman, 17 stolen bases. I'm not worried about it. This is, again, another 0-2 count. Let's go to our strikeout pitch. The now inside slider and he swings and misses so three strikeouts but we give up a run on that rbi single into center field paul seawald keeps us alive but unfortunately was not able to give us the win there well again we're pinch running for eugenio suarez with oswaldo cabrera on second as harry ford comes up last time we were in this situation harry ford obliterated a pitch and sent it out for a two-run walk-off home run a little bit further back on the walls of comerica though so we're going to bide our time and look for a really, really nice pitch to swing on. First one misses for a ball. Second one in for a strike. One and one count. And we were just way out in front of the circle change. If that was a fastball, maybe enough to get the base hit. Instead, it's a one and two. Ford keeping it alive. There's the base hit. I'm going to not wind him home. It's too risky. It was not a great throw to the plate, but I'm not taking a, an out there. Ford keeps us alive and will allow Dylan Moore to try and do something. Tempting to go with like a suicide squeeze. That was a great circle change to swing on, but with Dylan Moore righty against righty, I don't know if I feel confident. Super low contact, low power. We need something really good. We need to just get lucky with like a grounder or a liner through a gap here. Uh, man, it's tempting to have Harry Ford try to steal here. 0-2 count. Swinging on it, missing, and I'm going to wind him home. That's going to give us the leading run on the pass ball strikeout and it moves forward to second. Gets him in scoring position. The wild pitch devastating for Detroit. The pinch run paying off there. And now JP Crawford with one out has a chance maybe to drive in another. Swinging on the first pitch. It's lifted to deep right field. We're going to tag up here. And he gets in safe. Okay. Oof. I get real scared on those. Well, Jesse Winker, lefty against righty. Yep. <laughs> okay, the intentional walk coming in. I was going to say, if somebody could absolutely crush one, it would be him. But they're going to test their look with uh, Mitch Haniger. No, Dom T. Williams, who's still batting 412 on the season. So still seeing a lot of success. Another lefty batter up. As again, a base hit brings in another run. 7-6. First pitch outside for a ball. It's like a 1,200 OPS for Dom T. Williams right now. That's that's really impressive. On the 1-0 count, ball inside, makes it 2-0. His, his batting sets seem really impressive for his skill as we miss the four-seamer. But if he's getting it done, he's getting it done. And that one's gone, the three-run shot. Well, there's where the OPS and the batting average are coming from. Dom T. Williams obliterated it. We're hitting home runs with guys I would have never expected to hit home runs with. And that's going to give us, what, a four-run lead? 109 mile an hour exit velocity. That one almost pushed 400. Kind of lucky it went out to right field down the line. But, hey, a home run is a home run. So Tyler Wells will come in to continue to pitch as Adam Frazier has a chance to really oh, oh, oh keep things going he absolutely obliterated that one but it just goes foul that thing was launched up in the air that would have been an incredible first pitch second pitch way high for ball one tyler wells is definitely gonna be having his heart beating out of his chest after the first couple of pitches and he gets lucky there i wouldn't say lucky it was a bad swing from us as they're going to not track it down he that's an error I don't, he should have had an easy out there. Still alive, one, two. And we're going to foul it down the line or, or hit it down the line uh, for an easy out. Um, man, the fact that we have this lead, I got to feel confident that Paul Stewart can get it done. 10 sixes. Cabrera now is at third base. Hopefully he does a good job. First pitch is a strike. Is Willie Castro on second. Again, 81 speed. They got quick players. Winkler's going to get under it. Wink, Winkler. I said it again. Winker. I don't know what it is about Jesse's last name. It makes me want to throw an L in there. <laughs> well, there's out number one. And we keep the runner at second. 
Keely Badu comes back in. And the eight spot. Man, we're really good, lucky to be at the bottom of the order here. Paul Seawald, 20 pitches. Definitely more than we typically see from him. Throws it up. Winker going to get under it again. And again, we keep the runner at second. And now with two outs left, it's really not looking good for the Tigers. We can hopefully just uh, have them pop it up. Maybe we can get another strikeout. Let's go with that outside slider for pitch two. He's going to swing and miss. We got the 0-2 to the man in the nine spot. If you're going to strike out anybody, it's right here. And we hit the strike. You, you can't not call that a strike. That was a perfect pitch. Instead, they say it's 1-2 and the Tigers are still alive. And we give him another... What, what do we have to do to get a strike call here? He's not calling anything high for us. Quickly, 2-2. Two and two. This game should be over and we miss low to load the count. This is absurd. I'm going to step off the bag for a second here. Try to get the heart rate down a little bit for Paul Seawald. And we're going to go with another high fastball. He hasn't been calling it, but if we keep it a little bit lower or if he just swings and misses... My goodness, I'm trying to help out the Tigers, but we come away with the win anyways. Paul Seawald gets it done. Oh, man. So we end the month of August with a couple of wins against a good Detroit team. And now we are in a really good spot. That puts us at 70 wins on the season. I mean, we have the month of September to try to push for 90. It's not going to be easy. I don't know if we'll get there, but you're feeling confident. And again, the trades, the pieces that we've moved this season have been also instrumental. Anthony Rizzo's been huge. Oswaldo Cabrera we traded for, and he's done really well. It just, uh, it just continues, and I am super impressed with this team. So that gets us 70 and 64, six games above 500, and second in the division, just three games back of the Angels. This, this winning streak continues. We would be looking good, and we are currently in a wild card spot. Quite a ways behind the race. 83 and 51, sitting at a .61 winning percentage, and they're in the wild card. My goodness, dude. The, uh, the AL East is absolutely stacked. That is, uh, that's kind of a bummer. I mean, the Yankees are five games above 500, and they're 16 games back on the division. Well, uh, let's throw in one more contract extension here at the end of August. I don't know who we want to give it to. Let's go, Oswaldo Cabrera. No, Dom T. Williams hit the home run. He gets the offer at 26 years old. He's 73 overall. See potential right fielder. Kind of going up still on his overall. Uh, I said 26. We can offer him five years, no problem. Let's front load it. Let's back load it. We got to back load at this point and try to offer him 300000 a year. How about 320,000? How about 340,000 a year? That's a that's a steal of a deal for us, I think. You know what? We can add one more. We'll throw we'll give uh, Oswaldo a chance as well. He's just 23, 74 overall shortstop. He's looking good. Can we give him 5 years? Absolutely not. He says uh we could probably afford to backload this contract since it won't cost us a whole lot. 250k a year. Uh, how about 275? He'll sign that, and just like that, we get a couple more guys signed. I'm so excited with the, that month of August that we've had, the month of September. If it continues to be even half as good, we should be in a really good spot. 8-2 and two in our last 10 matchups, and we end the month uh, currently on a four-game winning streak. So things just continue to go well for this team. We're making the right push. We're playing well at the right time. We just got to finish up the season. Unfortunately, that is going to have to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed this one, please feel free to hit the like button. Subscribe if you're not already. And then let me know down in the comments if you have expected this kind of search at all. Because I certainly was not. After you've done that, you can head down to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and our community Discord. But all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Northwest Green Boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios. Special thanks to our Tier 3 members, Durham Finch, Avery Binkley, and Warmaster777.